<laughs> oh, good old San Francisco rush. Who knew it had a PC port? Greetings, and welcome to an LGR thing about a 1998 graphics card. This right here is a Quantum 3D Raven. Look at that glossy black PCB. Now, this is a single speed AGP GPU that originally sold for 149 US dollars on its introduction in the fall of 1998, with a $30 mail in rebate being offered on top of that. And yeah, that was just the standard thing. So effectively, it was $120 with the rebate that every retailer got. So yeah, this right here, even though it looks really cool and it's got the Quantum 3D branding, which that's kind of legendary on its own, the chipset is not too amazing. You know, it's just a 3DFX Voodoo Banshee. And you know, 3DFX Voodoo cards are awesome typically, but the Banshee, eh, it's kind of a mixed reputation. On the plus side, it was a 2D and 3D solution integrated onto a single card. Plus, it had a bit more RAM than most of those older 3DFX cards. 16 megabytes dedicated SD RAM and a single speed DMA AGP connection with a 100 hertz core and memory clock. But yeah, like I said, I mean, it's just pretty standard stuff in terms of the Voodoo Banshee series of cards. The reference cards from 3DFX weren't too different from this. It's just this one has a black PCB, the uh, Quantum 3D branding. This Raven card in particular was a really underperforming example of the Banshee compared to some of the others on the market at the time. It had a slower clock speed at only 100 megahertz core and memory, and it had a lack of AGP textures, which led some reviewers at the time to recommend the Raven for business, not gamers, because it did 2D very well but was just middle of the road underperforming in terms of 3D with certain games. Not only that, but for Quantum 3D as a brand, this was a rather unusually middle of the road underperforming card for them as well, because you know that was a company that was really known for their crazy high-end cards. Often three, four, five times as expensive as the Raven here, <laughs> like this legendary beast. This is the Quantum 3D Obsidian 2 X24, which was the fastest single slot Voodoo 2 board ever made. You got these PCBs sandwiched together. Uh, again, another future LGR type of topic right here. But yeah, this was so much better than the Raven, but it was also like 550 bucks or something. So, you know, we're not going to talk about that. But that's the kind of thing that Quantum 3D was really known for. So when this came out, and was only a hundred megahertz clock. It's like, what are they doing? It's got the trademark black PCB, but that's about it. There is another port around here, which is kind of interesting. Not all of them had this. Uh, in addition to the just standard 15 pin VGA, we also have this, which looks like S video at first, but it is not. That is a Visa Mini DIN 3 port for outputting to active shutter glasses for stereo 3D. Now that's going to be a future LGR thing. Uh, I'm not going to go into that for this video because really what we're interested in is some of the things that this card allows in terms of software compared to other Banshee cards, particularly one game. Now, this is fascinating, okay? <laughs> um, so this is just the software and or whatever, that, that's standard stuff pretty much. But so it came with Gex Enter the Gecko. This was already on PC. You could buy it separately. Same with NFL Blitz. This was already on PC as well. It had its own PC port. But then you have this right here. <laughs> this is San Francisco Rush The Rock Alcatraz Edition. Uh, yeah, this got a PC port only through the Quantum 3D Raven. They didn't ever sell this on its own, as far as I know. And this is the only copy that I have ever come across. And in order to play this, you need a Quantum 3D Raven graphics card. There are actually some other ways to get this going that we'll discuss later, but normally, you know, if you bought this in 1998, the only way that you'd be able to play this CD-ROM is with this card, and that's it. The fact that a full arcade game from Atari and Midway would get a PC port, and you could only play it with one card? Like, what kind of licensing weird agreement happened there? But uh, yeah, the entire reason that I have this set here is thanks to uh, an LGR viewer who posted over on the LGR fan run subreddit. 
And I just posted a comment as soon as I saw what it was and was like, whoa, I've been looking for one of these for a while. If you'd like to sell it, I'm happy to pay you for it. And they were interested in selling and here it is. Again, this is the only one of these that I've ever come across with the software and everything. And it really is the software that sets this apart because you know, the card, it's not terribly special on its own, but uh, I think it's absolutely fascinating because of what it can do in terms of the software. And also the fact that these cards were used in a lot of arcade machines. Well, maybe not a lot of them, but there were a, a subset of arcade hardware from mostly Atari and Midway. In fact, you might have seen the 3DFX logo on a number of their classic games with many of those cards made by Quantum 3D. So you had Quantum 3D, 3DFX voodoo hardware inside of arcade machines. And yeah, Q3D was a company that was spun off from 3DFX back in the day to bring their tech to the arcade and training simulator markets. And, you know, I kind of covered some of this in my 3DFX Tech Tales video some years ago. But yeah, something I don't think I mentioned there is the fact that Quantum 3D, unlike 3DFX, they are still around. And they're still making training sims and other kinds of things for contractors in that market today. But yeah, the Raven card. So it was used in some different arcade machines. But as far as I can tell, it was the PCI version of the card, not the AGP one. And some machines that I know for sure that the Raven was used in are NBA Showtime, NBA on NBC, NFL Blitz 2000 Gold Edition, Gauntlet Dark Legacy, and Cart Fury. Those all used Banshee-based Quantum 3D cards like the Raven, but you'll notice that Rush the Rock Alcatraz Edition is not something I mentioned. And yeah, it didn't use one of these, even though it came with a port of that. <laughs> it actually used some Voodoo One-based hardware from 1997. So... Again, just kind of confusing that this ended up with a PC port for this card. I, I, I don't know, man. Uh, it's fascinating. If anybody has any more information on that, let me know, because I'm curious. But uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and get this installed in my Windows 98 PC. And uh, well, yeah, we'll check it out. See what it can do in terms of the software that came with. The only other thing that I got in this bundle um, from the, the Redditor was uh, this quick start guide and yeah, it's pretty typical stuff so yeah let's install all this and um just see what happens <laughs> i'm quite curious to see this in action okay so i've got the lgr mega aluminum monster windows 98 build ready to install the raven inside of extremely simple stuff way simpler than any of the Voodoo ones or twos, but uh, yeah, just gonna swap out the Voodoo three that's in here for the moment. Anyway, we'll come back to this. And yeah, for now, swapping out the Voodoo three, and in goes the Raven. Let's get it installed with Windows ninety eight and see what it does. Got a video and a little bio startup there. It's our quantum 3D text going on, so that is a good sign. <laughs> Having not actually tested this card to see if it worked before this, yeah, just never know how these things are gonna go. Yeah, just sees it as a standard PCI graphics adapter. Didn't find any drivers or anything, so I'm assuming that it can't use the 3DFX drivers I had on there already for the Voodoo 3. So we'll just try the Raven CD-ROM, see what happens. Ooh, drivers. Nice. All right, so yeah, it is gonna overwrite some things, but uh, we're not gonna keep any of it. All right, let's see what we got here. Ooh, we have a Raven tab. I was expecting something. Gamma settings, pretty typical. Got some version information, 16 megs, Glide 2X and 3X, VSync, splash screen, bitmap, limit texture memory to two megs. For older Glide games, I assume, triple buffering, how fancy. Just test it. Ooh, yeah. That is some high frame rates right there. Excellent. Ooh, you can change the individual refresh rates for lower resolutions as well. That's awesome. 
Let's see what's in the Direct 3D area. We got some uh, yeah, V-Sync, anti-aliasing, nice. Higher quality, uh, okay, whatever. Let's just see what the ta oh, <laughs> we're getting some pretty good frames. <laughs> Okay, there we go. About almost, almost 60, pretty much 60 FPS at 1024 by 768, which is pretty awesome. I mean, you know, considering what we're running here. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, yeah, let's just install some games. Um, so I'm just going to go straight into it. San Francisco Rush, The Rock Alcatraz Edition. Now, I do already have it installed on here, but this is a different version. But we're going to run it straight off of the CD right now. Installation music. Why don't we do it anymore? <laughs> oh, 1998. Man, that got me so pumped. So, yeah, uh, like I said, ignore this for now. Let's just pretend those aren't there. All right. So, here's the thing that it normally installs. Rush 640 by 480. And this right here, if you were to try to run this on something that is not this Quantum 3D Raven, you get an error message saying exactly that. You need the Quantum 3D Raven in order to get this thing to run. Otherwise, it's just gonna error out and quit every single time you try to do anything. But of course we have the Raven installed, so we can run it. I will say this though, only keyboard support. Yeah, I know I don't have anything else. Eh. 3D FX. And yeah, here we go. It is initializing the elusive PC version of Rush the Rock Alcatraz Edition. <laughs> the Karma Entertainment. Uh, the volume leveling is all over the place, I have noticed. Anyway, I guess Karma Entertainment did the port job for this. Um, otherwise, you pretty much just get a yeah, nice interlaced version of what you would see on the arcade attract screen. No demo gameplay, it just loops like these same video clips though. And here we go, we've got the track selection, or really the difficulty selection, but you know, tracks. <laughs> Let's just go with uh, the normal one. And we got our car selection. We got to go with the full simulation. <laughs> I always just like the way that car looks. So anyway. And here we go. It is Rush on a PC. <laughs> it's so surreal to see it, honestly. Okay, well, that, I don't know how that happened. Um, speaking of surreal. <laughs> yeah. So this is not a great port. I mean, it's a very direct one in terms of like, it just takes what seems like the arcade's code and just straight up makes it run on a PC with a mouse and keyboard or joysticks, whatever you happen to have plugged in. But the physics are a little wonky. Uh, as, as you might be able to see. And of course the frame rate isn't good. And it, this is not a limitation of like the computer itself. You know, if uh, you know anything about this build. I did a whole video on it. You got a gigahertz Pentium 3, a whole cramp load of RAM, and of course the 16 megabyte Voodoo Banshee. It should be plenty. But you know, we're getting like sub 20 FPS or something. I don't know, it's not, it's not great. Um, and there are no graphics options. There's no like anything that you can really change. Uh, it, it literally is just, wow, okay. Yeah, what you see is what you get, pretty much. Still, extremely cool to have an arcade port on the PC like this that was not available in any other form. It just blows my mind that, you know, one of their, like, star arcade titles at the time... Wow. You know, okay. 
we'll just accept that and continue. <laughs> this is just such a crazy game, man, in the arcades. People were always crowding around it back in the day, from what I recall, anyway. So I imagine it would have, like, sold okay if they had actually sold it. <laughs> like, on store shelves and not just as a part of this bundle. But they didn't, so... All right, fine. So many laps, we're done here. And it just quits to Windows. Yeah, there's not a whole lot to that. But in the install directory, we have some different things in here. So in addition to just like the files, which are kind of cool in and of itself, just to look around and see what they are like, ooh, look at all these WAV files. But anyway, in here you also have some different executables for different resolutions. If you want to make the game run even worse, you can do that. Otherwise, the most interesting things in here are the manuals. So some documentation, such as it is. It doesn't really give you much more in terms of like what you can do with this port of the game because it really is so bare bones. There's basically nothing here. You get uh, controls for the things that you could do in the regular arcade version of the game anyway. You know, change your car color, the view and stuff like that. But what is really kind of interesting is when you get down into here, command line parameters. This is how you change some of the options. Uh, you got the resolution things once again, but some different views, <laughs> mini car chase view and tiny car chase view. Basically it pulls the camera out way, way out and kills the performance even worse. Great. But these two are really pretty fascinating. You got unregulated speed and unlimited speed. Now this one in particular, this seems to be a frame limiter. So if you turn this off, it just runs at whatever frame rate your system is capable of pushing out. I don't know how it's limiting it to only get like sub 20 FPS, but if you enable this, you can just let it go crazy. Uh, it does, however, mess with collision and other game aspects. Yeah, well, you know, I would rather have some frame rates at the moment, so we're going to do that. So uh, let us create a desktop shortcut. And we'll do unlimited. And there we go. And this will allow us to have an uncapped frame rate that just runs the internal code at whatever speed the computer's capable of, which means that you also get animations going way too fast. However, like, you can see the timer is still going at, like, the correct speed. So I think that it's not, like, too ruined, you know? It's not, like, making the game logic or anything run way quicker. But some of the physics do get a little wonky. I mean, they were already wonky, but... You know, <laughs> I've seen some weird stuff playing with an un uncapped frame rate, and it also makes the controls that much more jittery, responsive. This is really made for analog controls, so, you know, playing with a keyboard is never going to be ideal. But hey, at least we have a nice 60 FPS. Honestly? Considering the kind of craziness that we were getting with Rex earlier, uh, this is not so bad at the moment. Uh, I was just falling through the road and stuff. But yeah, San Francisco Rush on the PC. Ah, this is just, it's so cool. What a dream come true. When I found out about this, I was like, I've got to get one of these cards. It just blew my mind that there was this full port of the full experience, and they didn't do anything with it. <laughs> it's pretty great, in my opinion. Uh, however, so let's go back to the thing I said to ignore up until this point, and that is this right here. So these are some cracked executables. What they do is remove the requirement for the Quantum 3D Raven. So you can play this PC port of Rush on any computer uh, with a compatible video card that's not a Raven. This is just something that I ran across as I was trying to figure out some more information, you know, like any information on this PC port of the game, and I uh, saw a couple of users were doing some work on this years ago, and these cracks were still available, so I tried it out on the configuration that it was before this with my Voodoo 3 card, and this was the result. I mean, the frame rate was about the same, maybe a little worse, actually. I can't 
you know, I don't really have any exact measurements here, but if you go into the command line and restart the game with those command line parameters for the unlimited uncapped frame rate, again, you can get 60 FPS and there you go. Uh, wonky physics and everything. You don't need a Raven to play this anymore. So thank goodness for that because these cards are dang hard to find. But yeah, I mean, that really is it for what I mainly wanted to show in this video. I just wanted to show this port of one of my favorite arcade games, a very obscure version of it on the PC. But yeah, whatever, we still got a couple other things here we can check out, because why not? Let's try some Niffle Blitz <laughs> and see how that goes. Uh, I mean, you know, you can play this on, or any computer really. It's not restricted to the Raven as far as I know. Yeah, nothing special here. Looks like it takes pretty much any 3D accelerator of the time period, so. That in-your-face midway nonsense. Today's matchup, the Carolina Panther versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah! Okay, let's see if I remember these controls. Oh, dear. Hold turbo button. I... Is it this one? Nope. Ah! Ah! <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> I don't care. Let's just do things. Ah. I should have looked up the controls. Ah. I just want to defend. All right. There you go. Yeah! So that's much more fun. <laughs> this will smack dudes down and stuff. Oh, what the heck? I don't know why I'm surprised. I'm not surprised. But, you know, cool that it came with a copy. And lastly, we have Gex Enter the Gecko. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I've ever played the PC version of this. I know I've played it on the PS1 a fair amount. <laughs> Such personality. The 90s. I don't know if anybody actually loves this character, but man, <laughs> he left an impact. At least in my mind. <laughs> this gratuitous intro. Okay. Finally. Let's see what we got here. Oh, really? Is it going to go through? Okay. <laughs> I was going to go through all the way across the landscape again just to get to this. Huh, so we got WASD for up, down, left, right. JKL space. All right. Ooh, it's weird. <laughs> Moving a platformer with my left hand on a keyboard is just strange to me, but okay. Ooh, it's getting some weird, like, uh, frame rate weirdness. Look at the... Yeah, I think, I think this is one of those where maybe the physics are tied to the frame rate. So this is Never Never Land. It never gets it from the outside. I'm already annoyed by Gex. Anyway, uh, yeah, like, this is pretty much how it's supposed to be running here. But, like, whenever I was getting... Oh, yeah, like, that's way too fast. Look at that. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, man, that's not good. Yeah, definitely need a frame limiter on this one, or a V-Sync something, because this isn't... This is running way too fast most of the time. Oof. Makes these, uh... Controls even weirder than they should be. It'd probably be perfectly fine on a slower computer from 98 or something, but... This one is a rather quick one. So this is Never Never Land. It never does it from the outside. Well, I don't know 
know about you, but I've not, had enough of Gex. <laughs> I was gonna say, is there something to like change the way that it handles the frame rate? Cause that's, maybe that's just how it is. And I mean, I got V-Sync on in here. Yeah. Well, that's unfortunate, but uh, so is Gex. <laughs> Well, I suppose that is it for this video on the Quantum 3D Raven video card from 1998. Uh, pretty fascinating edition of a Voodoo Banshee. And it's really just the fact that it comes with San Francisco Rush, an official PC port that was released in this way with this card, but then seemingly forgotten about or just abandoned. Never made it to retail. It's just an unusual situation. So yeah, if you enjoyed taking a look at it with me, then fantastic. I've done a lot more videos on different late 90s computery things. Video cards, sound cards, and games, and all sorts of stuff from around then, and older and newer, with new videos going up each week here on LGR. And as always, thank you very much for watching.